Hi! Welcome to an updated Clipping Mask tutorial. This is just a quick yet needed refresh as a result of our latest Layers update. Layers changed, so did masks. First of all, an existing mask is easily recognizable from the Layers panel now. So let's select this bubble here. Then from Layers, we can immediately see this little mask icon, indicative of a clipping mask that was already applied which can be done in a few ways, the easiest being from quick actions. Here's the difference between the same group of objects, masked or unmasked. What a clipping mask does is essentially crop all objects positioned above it in its shape. But let's see how we can create a fresh new mask. Let's collapse this group and close my entire small bubble layer so it's easier to manage our workspace. And now let's move to our main bubble and give it the same aesthetic like all our other bubbles, which we can do with, you guessed it, masking. So let's grab our oval tool and draw a perfect circle by holding one finger on the canvas, adjust its position so they're centered, and then I'm going to move the circle under the blur layer. In order to make this bubble look like all the others, I need to mask the blur effect or I want to crop it under a perfect circle shape instead of it fading out like it is now. Let's color the mask different so you can see it better. Then activate multi-select so you can choose both the object you want to use as a mask and the object you want to crop, and then hit mask from quick actions. Remember, all elements above your mask will fall under its shape. Voila, now a new group was created. The mask is at the bottom with the little mask symbol, and the masked object is at the top. Time to change the color back. So here I selected my mask and I can basically make any changes I want, like color, stroke width. I can also change opacity and so on. Looks better now. And here again, we see the difference between mask and no mask. If you want to edit your mask placement and shape, we have two ways. First one is entering isolate mode. Double tap on the object, then select your masks and move it around until you feel like you've found a better placement. But the second option is arguably simpler. We introduced a new mode of the selection tool, the click through mode, which when activated allows you to directly select any nested elements within a mask or group and move them about. So now I've selected the blur shape, for example, and I can move the blur within the group as much as I want until I've achieved the desired effect. A key takeaway here is that any object can be a mask, but whichever object you choose to convert into a mask will crop all objects above it. Let's look at another quick example. This simple text design is a pretty common yet effective way to use masking. We have a group here that contains an image, which is cropped to the shape of the word hello. Here's what happens when I just have the classic selection tool on hand. But here's what happens when I activate click through mode. Now I can move the marble texture around until I find a design that I like. Lastly, once a mask is created, here's how easy it is to add more elements to the masked group. Let's quickly add this image from Unsplash on the canvas. Just drag and drop it into the masked group, and now it's being cropped as well. Then use the click through mode to adjust exactly the way you want it. So maybe I'll just make my two L's green and leave the rest pink. And these are masks for you. A very, very useful operation to know in vector design and the best way to crop, no doubt. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for our next Academy episode. Like, comment, subscribe, the works.